computer. There we go. Okay, good. So we are now recording. First, oh my God, somebody else. Ooh, we gotta let them in. Oof. All right, so is there anything that, because I've had a lot of people taking practice tests. So it should be two or three people on that should be taking their exam this week. Um, so especially if you've been practicing on Schoology, is there anything or any problem or any resource that you've been using that you want a problem that you know you want to know how to do? Uh, I hey, have Bridget. one. I have one. What's it's that? like it's like suppose they're like say um Erica has forty dollars uh -huh. and um Betty have forty dollars plus and everything has to add up to like fifty dollars or eight eight dollars or something. Well, so see if you can find me a specific question. Um, what I think you might be talking about is something like something like this. Let me open up school G real quick. I think I'm I'm not sure, but see if you can find that individual question. So somebody also put system of equations. I just saw that flash by my eyes. So what I want to do is I'm gonna go over the practice problems and see yes, if we can find a system of equations. Now, you might also be talking about algebraic expressions. So um, so let's make sure. Now I had something set for a quadratic equations tonight, but let's answer those mm -hmm. questions first. So again, Schoology is a free site that I made up that you can use, okay? So, um, again, it's like a substitution. It's like substitution, something like substitution. Um, well, that question you said is not really. Oh, you're talking about system of equations. That's what you're talking about. Oh, it must be that. Mm -hmm. You're talking about system of equations. So a lot of people teach that differently, but. Um, no, not this one, not this one. Yeah, but it's in a word problem. That's all. But let's okay. see. Let's see. Um, the, you, you probably won't have. Let me ask you a question. So let's look at this problem right here. It says solve the following system of equations. Express the solution as an ordered pair. X plus 2Y equal 11. 6X minus 2Y equal 10. Does anybody have any idea how they would solve this problem? Because to me, it just looks hard. Does anybody have any idea how to do this problem? Okay. Oh. They would um, they try to eliminate the, the two plus two and negative two y. Okay, so first of all, um, as she said, your goal in a system of equations is try to eliminate one of the variables. So what you should notice is that one of the variables is already being eliminated. Mm -hmm. Plus two y minus two y cancel each other out. Does everybody understand that? So yes. when we combine these two equations, what's x plus 6x? 7x. 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 Because if you don't realize, what number is in front of that x? A 1. A 1. So 1x plus 6x is 7x. The two y's cancel out. And what's 11 plus 10? 21. 21. How can I get x by itself? What do I need to do? Divide, divide by divide by seven x. Divide by, by, by divide seven, by what? Seven. Seven. Divide by seven. The sevens cancel. We get x equal what's twenty one divided by seven. Three. 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 So right away we know it can't be a. We know it can't be b, because x is three. And we remember uh, a system of equation has two solutions, three and some other solutions. So c and d both have three as one of the solutions. Um. Now. Once we solve for x, what are we going to do? Plug it back in. Plug, plug it back, back in. in. So I'm gonna plug it into this uh to this uh this first one here. Right? So I'm gonna have three plus two y equal eleven. So I took this three, I look, I took this equation here, x plus two y equal eleven, and I substituted a three as x because that's what we found x was three. Does everybody understand that? Uh-huh. Okay, if I wanna solve for y, 
what term do I need to get rid of first? The X. Nope. Well, no, yeah. I'm here. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want to get Y by itself. What do I need to do first? Oh, uh, you have to divide. Nope. No. You have to bring <laughs> what, the three on the other side. You, you have to get, get multiply the right. three to the two, right? No. You have to so, so let's make sure we understand. This is a so one of the things with algebra, one of the most important things to be able to do algebra is you must be able to understand or solve a one step and two step algebraic mm -hmm. equation. Right. This is a two step equation. Equation. So it only has one variable right now. That's y. So our whole I'll tell you, Mr. algebra Timmy, is to get zero. y by itself. So, so we have, have to, so you have hold to on for a, a second, hold on, hold on, hold on for one second. So a we have, three. hold on for one second. We have two terms on the same side, the variables. We have three and two Y. If we want to get Y by itself, we need to get rid of that three first. Yes. So how can we get rid of that three? It's going to be a negative three. Why negative three? Because this is supposed to be a plus. Right. So what we don't plus. what we don't see is this is a plus three and we want to do the opposite operation. We want to do the inverse operation. So the opposite of plus three is a minus three. Whatever we do on one side. Oh, we do on the, the other. other side. So the threes cancel. You get two Y is equal to eight. What's our next step? Divide. Divide by what? Two. Divide by two. Whatever we do on one side, we do to the other. What happens to the twos on the left side? Cancel. They cancel out, so we get y is equal to, what's eight divided by two? Four. Four. So now, I'm sorry about that. So let me make sure that's not a student trying to get in. I don't know what number that is. So x is three, y is four. So our option, the correct option, would be option C. Now, so you're looking at me or you're listening to me and you're saying, Mr. Tinsley, wow. Oh, my God, my head is spinning. Oh, what am I going to do? I'm never going to pass this. This is what I want you to understand. When you start having those negative thoughts, this is what I want you to do. I want you to sit back. I want you to take five deep breaths. And what they're asking you to do is solve this system of equations. So the second thing I want you to do is say, hold on. Well, the multiple choice, let me increase this a little bit. The multiple choice are possible answers. Uh -huh. So even though we did it algebraically just right now, this, that's what they want you to do. So thank you, Ms. Coleman. Ms. Coleman just sent me a text and said, can't we just plug the numbers in? Yes. So what you can actually do to solve this system of equations, right? Watch this. I'm going to show you something. Let me grab this calculator and I'm gonna clear everything out. And if you if you haven't purchased the ebook, I would, I would, I would, it would behoove you to, to purchase it because I'm giving you a lot of shortcuts like this to pass your test. So first of all, I'm gonna look at two. I'm gonna look at the first option: x is two, y is one. Right? So what I can do is watch this: two store x, enter, one store y. I now entered into my calculator with X and Y. Are. Now, I'm going to type in that first expression. If that first option solves that equation, then I'll try the second one. If not, I'll remove it. So X plus 2Y, I need to see what? When I press enter, I should see what? 10. Not 10. X plus 2Y. If this 11. is true, which 11. So I'm going to hit enter. Do I see 11? No. No. So it is not A. I'm going to go to my second one. X is 2. Y is 4. And I'm going to do the same thing. X plus 2Y. And I need to see 11. Do I see 11? Uh-uh. No. No. So I know it's not B. Let's go to 3. I mean C. So three, store X, enter, four, store Y, enter. I'm going to plug in the first equation, X plus two Y. 
Which, what do I need to see if this is true? 11. 11. Do I see 11? Yes. Yes. So I know it worked for the first equation. But a system of equations, your solution must work for both equations. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. So now I'm going to type in my second expression, 6x minus 2y. If this is true, what should I see on the other side? 10. 10. What do I see? 10. Ding, 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 ding. I didn't do any algebra. Mm -hmm. All I understood is that this is an algebraic equation. And if they're giving me the solutions, I can plug them in. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so let me say this. Let me clear it for one second. And let me increase the size of the calculator so you can see it. So when you go back over this tonight and you have your calculator, I want you to go through step by step and say, man, this is much easier than trying to solve this algebraically. But it's going to take practice. So you got to put the time in. So you got to you got to go through it now again. Now, as a math instructor, what I would want you to do is know how to do it algebraically. But I also understand many of you need this diploma for a new job, to go to college, whatever, for a promotion, whatever. So I gave you a way that you can also solve this with the calculator. Okay. Now let's look at this yes. problem. Oh, this a one, word yes. problem. Look at this yes. problem. Yes, yes, yes. Dennis yes. mold his yes. next door neighbor's lawn for a handful of dimes and nickels. There were 80 coins in all. Upon completing the job, he counted out the coins and it came to $6.60. How many nickels and dimes did Dennis earn? Maybe I should have made him some more money. Six sixty dollars for a loan is, is cheap labor. <laughs> but anyway, how could you even, this is a system of equations as a word problem. So it's two things that you can do. You can solve it algebraically and you can say, D is dimes, uh, N is nickels, and I know that my nickels plus my dimes must be 80. Mm -hmm. I also know that the number of nickels times 0 0.05 plus the number of dimes times 0 0.10 must be 660. So let me rearrange that equation because we want our coefficients first. So 0 0.05 nickels plus 0 0.10 dimes equals 660. Does everybody understand where I got those two equations from? No. Okay. Yes. yes. A nickel is worth how much? Five cents. So what is five cent as a decimal? Point zero five. Zero That's point where the five. 0.05 came from. So for each nickel you have, you multiply it by five cents. Does everybody understand that? Okay. And for the dimes, a dime is worth 10 cents. So for the okay. what, for each dime you have, you're multiplying it by 0 0.10. Now, I can tell you right now, this is considered a difficult problem. This problem is going to take you anywhere from five to 10 minutes. Okay. Now, Mr. Tinsley said, well, he wants, he wants me to be able to do this algebraically, and I do. But I don't think you should waste five to 10 minutes. So what I'm going to show you is an alternate way. In order to solve this problem without doing it algebraically, OK? Does anybody have any idea how I can solve this without doing this problem algebraically yes plug it in plug what in so so let me clear the screen what do you mean so you want to grab my calculator and tell me what i'm plugging in now i'm going to maximize the calculator later because i want to be able to see the multiple choice so the first thing we should do is all our multiple choice we have 80 coins because 28 plus 52 is 80 52 plus 28 is 80 40 plus 40 is 80. 30 plus 50 is 80. So we already know that these multiple choice answers satisfy the first equation. N plus D equal 80. Right. 
Now we need to figure out which multiple choice is equal to 660. How am I going well, to do that? Five cents times 28. So 28 times 0 0.05 plus what? 10 cents times 52. 52 times 0 0.10. Now, when I hit enter, what amount should I see if I know A is the correct answer? $6.80. Six, no, not $6.80, $6.60. So, oh, so I'm going to hit 60. So I'm going to hit enter. Did I get 660? Yep. Yeah. Yes. yes. So guess what? I'm done. That's the answer. I'm done. That's no algebra. That's no setting up equations. That's no getting rid of N or D. That's not plugging anything back in. This is the way, if you get a word problem with system of equations, I would rather you solve this equation to understand what you have and to use the multiple choice to get your answer. Does everybody understand that? So yeah. now, if you are new tonight, you should be excited with what you just saw. Because what you just saw was, a five to 10 minute problem. And I believe um, Natasha and, and who, who was that? Was that Bridget? Yes. <laughs> just did this question in less than 45 seconds. Now, luckily it was A, but let me show you something. Say if it wasn't A. Say if it wasn't A. Guess what I can do? I can go back up to this original expression, hit enter, and then I can change 28 to 52 Watch this, 52 is my, and 28 dimes. And I can change my 52 to 28. And then I can check each time, 540, that was wrong. Let me go 40, 40, go back up into the expression, hit enter and change my numbers to 40 and 40. Again, this is using the multiple choice to get the answers you need without having to solve it algebraically. So let me say this again. Let me clear the screen and let me increase the size of the calculator so you can see each step. But this is what I try to give to you with the ebook to make your job much easier. Because I can tell you right now, who has who has who's been taught system of equations in class? Anybody? Yes, me. Now. Just now, you. now just you. How, how long did it take you? A week, two weeks? How long did it take for the teacher to show you system of equations? A long time. I'm still, I'm still I never, I never seen it. Exactly. So my point to you, I just gave you an easy way. The easiest thing to do is to do two things. First of all, if, if you understand why you use system of equations in the steps, I need to eliminate one of the variables. Why? So let me show you something. This is another example. Let me find a study guide of what you might be expected to do. Now, they're not hard at all if you know what you're looking for. So I'm going to show you an example of another type. And this is the GD study guide. Uh, after scales, it's quadratic. I mean, it's a system of equations. So it's towards the end. And this is examples of what you need to be able to do. See, what happens is we try to remember how to do the problem instead of having a conceptual understanding of what we need to do. So let me find that problem. Here we go right here, okay? Here's a little different. They don't have an X and a Y. So we can't plug an X and a Y into my equations. But what we can do is what we, sh what we should notice is that they're already opposites. They already cancel each other out. Mm -hmm. So you can already combine these equations. 4x and 4x is 8x. Bring down my equal because these three y's cancel. Minus 16 plus 8 is minus 8. Again, to solve for x, I divide both sides by 8. I get x equal negative 1. I'm done. I'm out of there. Okay. So again, you can't just remember and say, oh, they might give it to me this way. No. So this is why I use the practice test on Schoology to give you all these different ways. I give you word problems. I give you explicit system of equation, just the practice. Now, what I can tell you is you probably want to have one, one or two system of equations. So I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time on system of equations, okay? Because you're only going to have one or two of them. So I wouldn't spend a whole lot of time. 
Okay, so now I can't remember what the second, somebody said system of equations, and what was the I other got, one? I, I got one, I got one that I've been trying Good. to work on the whole weekend and I can't get it. Okay, tell me what it is. It is simplify the following algebra equation. It's okay. like two um, parentheses x minus one over mm -hmm. parentheses x plus three at, um, at 5x over parentheses x minus two parentheses. Yes. Okay. Wow. I can do the multiplication. I can do the multiplication because I know how to do the cross and I know how to factor it out. But this right here, I just can't get it. Okay. So that's a wonderful question. Okay. This is a wonderful question. Okay. You're going to have one of these. Okay. Um, now, what do we know about fractions? So, for example, if I had uh, one over three plus one half, is that equal to one fifth? No. No. Okay. So that's that's the first thing I need you to understand. You so anytime you get something that's difficult for you, try to go back to what you know. So this is like a fraction, correct? So what we notice is, in order to add or subtract fractions, we must have a common denominator. Right. So. A quick way to solve this problem down here is that this denominator is two. So I'm going to multiply both top and bottom by two. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to multiply top and bottom by three. Why? Because then I'm going to have two over six plus three over six. And then right. if they have a common denominator, I can now add them and get five over six. Does everybody understand that? Right. Well, mm -hmm. guess what? That problem is the same exact thing. Right. But it's more difficult. So let me show you. Right. So let me erase it. But I'm going to show you. Because a lot of these problems, they look so hard. So for, um, so that was Bridget, right? Bridget, yes. don't ever, yes. ever, ever work on a problem all weekend. You either text <laughs> me, call me, email me. I don't care if you send me a smoke set, smoke signal through this air. But you don't, you don't work on any problem all weekend. But that's how I remember, though, if I try to figure it out myself. I and I understand that. that. I yes. I understand that. So first of all, please excuse my Dan Seller. We're going to go ahead and say 2x minus 2 over x plus 3 plus 5x over x minus 2. So remember what I just did. I multiply this by x minus 2. Mm -hmm. I multiply the bottom by x minus 2. And then over here, I'm multiplying this by the other denominator. So x plus 3 over x plus 3. So now this is just multiplying binomials, right? So we got x times 2x, which is what? 2x. 2x what? 2 x squared. 2x squared. What's x times minus 2? Positive x2? Nope. x times Wait. negative 2. Oh, um, 2x, negative 2x. Minus 2x, and then we multiply the minus 2 times 2x. What is minus 2 times 2x? Which would be um, negative 4. Negative 4 what? X. Negative 4x, and then what's negative 2 times negative 2? Positive 4. Positive 4. Do we have any like terms? Um. Yes, uh-huh. What are they? 2x. Two. Two uh, I, don't, I don't see two a 2x. Minus 2x. Ne oh, minus yeah. Right. So, so now we're going to have 2x squared. What's minus 2x minus 4x? 6 minus 6x squared. Minus 6x what? I mean, <laughs> minus 6x. Minus 6x plus 4. Now, we can't, re we can't forget the denominator. So we still have over x minus 2, x plus 3. Does everybody understand that? So all we did was multiply the other rational expression by the other denominator. So I multiply the first rational expression by x minus 2. Now I'm going to go to, to the other side and multiply the second rational expression by x plus 3. So what is 5x times x? 5x. Nope. 5x Wait, times x. Oh, 5x squared. 5x squared. What is 5x mm -hmm. times 3? 
15x. 15x. Well, guess what? The denominator is, is x minus 2, x plus 3. What can we do when the denominators are the same? Cancel them out. Nope. If the I denominator is the same, you, you right. can't cancel? No, we're not canceling. So, for example, if when I had, uh, what was it, 3, 6 plus 2, 6, right? Oh, you reduce. No. What do I do to the 3 and the 2? Add. You okay. add them. So you get 5 over 6. So we can combine the two numerators. So if we look at the two numerators, so we got 2x squared minus 6x plus 4, and we plus 5x squared plus 15x. Do we have any like terms? Yes. Two what are the squared, like terms? 2x squared and 5x squared. So that would be 7x squared. 7x squared. And then mm -hmm. what's minus 6x plus 15x? Um, 6... Um, Nine, uh, nine, 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 what? Nine X. Nine X. Nine X. And the four has no other term that we can buy. So we just bring the four. And then it's the same denominator we bring over. X minus two, X plus three. Gotcha. That's, this is considered a difficult problem. If you notice, no matter who you are, this is going to take you three to four minutes. So my... In my opinion, what do you think right. I would recommend? Skip and come back. Skip and come back to it. Yeah. Why? Don't spend five, six, seven, eight minutes on any problem until you finish the exam. Once you finish the exam and you come back to those difficult problems, then you can spend some time on them, but at least finish the exam. Let's do another example. And I'm glad you actually brought that up because this is one of the problems on the GED study guide. This is a 40, 40 question. There we go, right there. This is the same exact, this is a very, yeah. not the same exact, it's a very similar problem. So they're yeah. gonna ask you to add or subtract rational expressions. So let me ask you. Now, everybody might not get it. This is why once I send you the link for the video, you watch it slowly and you take a piece of paper out and you do it step by step until you got it. And then guess what? Then you do it again. And then guess what? Then you do it again. Then you don't watch the video and see you can do it by yourself. Then you go practice. So let me, let me increase the zoom so we can make this nice and clear. Oops. That's a wonderful question. And this is, this, is, this is the reason, this is the main reason why I have these sessions. Because I need you to understand there are other people just like you that don't understand something. And when you bring that question up and now we go over it, now you can fully understand it. So I have two denominators, X and X plus two. When am I going to multiply the first expression by to get a common denominator? X plus two. X plus two. Whatever I do to the top, to the bottom. I do to the mm -hmm. bottom. What am I going to multiply the second expression by? X. X. Okay. So now let's break it down. So I'm going to have to move over to the right. So I have three times X plus two over X times X plus two plus X times X over x times x plus two. What so now, we, who, who said that? Who said that? Who said that? Who said mm -hmm. that? Okay. So, so now, what's our next step? So now we multiplied the first rational expression by x plus two. We multiplied the second rational expression by x. Now, what's our next step? I'm so confused. Um, I'm so confused. Okay, where you, mm -hmm. where, where you get the two from? Because I thought we go three times x, which is three x. Right, we do. No, this is, this is. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So three, so go ahead. Three times x is three x. Three x. Three times two is six. Three x. And then plus we multiply six. three times two is plus six. Right. And then we keep the denominator. 
x y. over x plus 2 plus y. what's x times x? I can't really see, but x times x is x. No, x times x is not x. What's oh, x times x? 2x squared. Nope. What's x, x times x? Squared. x squared. x squared. Yeah, that's what I say. Gotta know x times x is x squared. Yes. Hey, remember, our exponent rules is x to the first times x to the first. When we're multiplying exponents with the same base, we add the exponents. So one plus one is two. So gotcha. x times x is x squared over mm -hmm. x times x plus two. Do they have the same denominator? Yes. Okay, what can we do to the numerators? Just, just add them up, huh? Just add them up. Now, we don't have any like terms, so we need to put them in order. Highest degree, mm -hmm. alphabetical. So x squared first, 3x next, plus 6, since they share the same denominator over x times x plus 2, which is gotcha. D. Very easy. So again, listen, mm -hmm. some, some people are saying, oh, my God, my head is exploding. This is why I send the video to you. And you go step by step. So let me, let me go over a simpler problem. One third plus one half, okay? They have different denominators. See? So I'm gonna multiply the second one by two over two, because that's my denominator of my other expression. I'm gonna multiply the second expression by three over three, because that's the denominator over here. So when I multiply two times one is two, two times three is six, one times three is three, two times three is six. They now have a common denominator, Two plus three is five over six. This is the same exact thing, except they use variables and unknowns. It's called adding or subtracting rational expressions. They give this incredible name to the concept that makes you think that this is difficult. It is not. What you can do, though, is I just gave you two examples. Go over those two examples until you understand those two examples. Because the difficulty of anything that is going to be on the GED is similar to the two examples I just showed you. They're not going to be harder than that. Okay? Wonderful question. Any other questions? Time is flying. It's already 640. Stop playing. Can you put Any... it in the calculator? You tell me. Can we put this in the calculator? I don't think so. No, no you can't. You cannot. No. No, because no. there's no there's no value that they they've given us to substitute, right? So that's why you can't put in the calculator. So no, you can't use you can't uh, for this concept um, adding or subtracting rational expressions. You cannot use the calculator for so. This, so this listen to what I told you to do. First I've of all, I've never want you to seen anything like this before. Wow, you haven't, and I don't even understand it. Okay, so do you know? So remember, what did I tell you to do? I told you to start with whole numbers, fractions, decimals, percents, ratio, and proportions. So if you understand that fractions, in order to add or subtract fractions, you must have a like denominator. Once you understand it, that's knowledge you should already know. So what you're saying to yourself is, hold on, I can't add these two terms because they don't have a common denominator. So what can I do to make sure they have a common denominator? You know what? I'm going to multiply this side by x plus 2. Whatever I do at the top, I do on the bottom. So you have to understand that thinking also, too. Every math teacher says it. Whatever you do to the top, do to the bottom. But understand why. 5 over 5 is equal to what? 1. 1. One whole. 8 over 8 is what? 1. 1. A divided by A is what? One. One. What's 5x squared divided by 5x squared? One. One. So anything divided by itself is one. So when I'm multiplying x plus 2 over x plus 2, really I'm not changing the value. I'm only multiplying by one. We should also know anything times one is itself. Right? We learned that, right? Mm -hmm. So, so we multiply this left expression by x plus 2. We multiply this second expression by x. Now, we just went over multiplying binomials. We just went 
over the distributive property. So what I did was I reordered this three times X plus two over X times X plus two. I just changed it so it can look like what we've been doing. X times X over X times X plus two. So you can see that the denominators are the same. Right. This is distributed property. This is, a, this is what you should already know. Remember, there's certain skills you should already know. Solving a one-step, solving a two-step algebraic equation, um, uh, uh, um, distributed property, combining like terms. If you don't know this, you need to revisit them to know. So we got 3x plus 6 mm -hmm. plus x squared all over x times x plus 2. Since they, we don't have any like terms, we put them in order. x squared plus 3x plus 6 over x over x plus 2. Now, let me show you something. Watch this. Mr. Tizzy, oh my God, that gave me a headache. My head is spinning. I don't know what to do. Oh, listen, again, this is what I want you hearing in your voice. Deep breath. Mr. Tinsley said, if it's a real difficult problem, first of all, if it's going to take me long, I'm going to skip it. I'm going to flag it for review and skip it. But watch this. If you know that you need a common denominator and you're multiplying this by x plus 2 and you're multiplying this by x, you already know your denominator needs to be x times x plus 2. You just got rid of a and b. Yes. So now, at least you got a 50% chance to get it right. So even if you didn't know anything else, the fact that you understood that a rational expression must have the same denominator if for you to add or subtract it, and you can figure out what that denominator is, you now got rid of A and B. Now you have a 50% chance to get that right. Now you have an educated guess. Okay, so if you don't know how to do a problem, that's the second advice I can give you. Try to eliminate two of the answers from what you know. Got a 50-50 chance. Wonderful question. All oh, the questions are tonight are amazing. I love it. And we got a packed house. Two, four, eight, six, twelve, eighteen. Stop playing. We got a whole crowd in here tonight. What's next? Tell me I'm excited. <laughs> I know y'all think I'm crazy, but I'm not. <laughs> Okay, I got another message. Here we go. Can we go over area? What do you mean by area? Just area in general? Let me see. Yes. Okay. Uh, there we go. First of all, what I would recommend you doing is knowing your formulas for area and volume. So, so, let, so now, I'm, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to connect all the area problems in one way. You, you're going to be sitting here like, oh, my goodness. So look at, look at all these formulas. So when you look at all these formulas, let me make it a little bit smaller. Let me see 350. So when you look at these formulas, it says square is equal to area equal S squared. When you look at rectangle, it says length times width. When you look at parallelogram, it says base times height. When you look at triangle, it has base times height. We look at trapezoid, it has base one plus base two times height. When you look at, it's like all these formulas are just confusing me. I'm gonna make it all simple tonight for area. You will never have a problem with area again. Watch this. Let me go to a blank page, okay? First of all, I'm going to draw a rectangle. We're gonna start with the rectangle. Well, everybody knows the formula for a rectangle. What is the formula to find the area of a rectangle? Length times width. Length times width. Everybody knows that. Everybody. Everybody knows that. Okay, well, watch this. I'm going to draw a square. I'm going to draw a square. Okay? So this is my length. This is my width. On a square, this is my length. This is one my width. Hold on, Mr. Tinsley. So you're telling me the area of a square is still length times width? Yes, it is. But the difference with a square is this, the sides are equal. 
So when you multiply the same thing by itself, like for example, five times five is five squared. Eight times eight is eight squared. So when they give you a square and they tell you that the side is S, that means all the sides are S. So mm -hmm. this side is S and this side is S. S times S is S squared. But it's still length times width. Does everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm glad you do. Okay, I'm gonna draw this rectangle again. Because what I need you to understand is understand that area is the space inside that I'm multiplying. I wanna find the space inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a diagonal. I'm gonna split. So when I draw this diagonal, right? What did it just create? When I drew, when I put that line, when I put, drew that diagonal through that rectangle, what two shapes do I have? Rectangle. Nope. Rectangle. Nope, triangle. not a rectangle. You have triangle. two triangles. Does everybody see that you have two triangles? Mm -hmm. What you should also notice is that you have two of them. So that means if I want an area of one of the triangles, I'm going to call this length and width. If I want the, 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 the area of one of these triangles, it's just one half length times width. Hold on, Mr. Tinsley. Hold on. But guess what? They tried to pull something on you. They changed the variables on you. They didn't call them length and width anymore. So what they did was, instead of calling them length and width, let me take a picture of that. Instead of, instead of them calling length and width, what they did was they now changed it and just called it base times height. And instead of using one half length times width, they changed the formula to be area equal one half base times height. Why? Because a triangle is half of a rectangle. So it all starts with a rectangle, length times width, a square, a length times width, but the sides are equal. That's how they get S squared. And a triangle is half of a rectangle. That's where they get the formula, one half base times height. Everybody understand that? All right, good. Let's next go to the next one, a parallelogram. Now, I don't know if I can, it's going to be a little bit difficult to draw a parallelogram, but I'll, I will try. I will try. Let's see. Well, it won't be, it won't be, the, it won't be to scale. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. So what you should notice is that all a parallelogram is, is a rectangle slanted. Mm -hmm. Right? So watch this. Remember, instead of length and width now, I'm using base and height. So this is my base, the foundation of my shape, and the height is right there. The height of this goes from this vertex here, straight down from a 90 degree angle to the base. So your height must touch your base. So what is my area? Base, base times, times height. height. Stop yeah. playing. Oh, hold on, Mr. Tins. You're telling me. Now, I'm going to draw one more shape. One more shape that you should be familiar with. Now, I went over rectangle. I went over square. I went over triangle. I went over parallelogram. They're going to ask you about a rectangle, either area or perimeter. Rectangle is always on every test. Then they're going to mm -hmm. ask you area one other. They might ask you a triangle. They might ask you a parallelogram. But watch this. This, this next shape, and I don't know how well I'm going to draw this, but I, I, I want to show you something. I want to show you something that's very important. I need you to see and have a conceptual understanding of what's happening here. Math is about patterns. What you should notice is this. Watch this. Let me change my color to blue. I'm going to draw a little dotted line right down here. Watch this. I want you to see something. Right? Which shape is this shape in the middle? Mm 
rectangle. A rectangle. If I take this triangle and I take it and flip it and I put it right there, right? You still have a rectangle. Rectangle. Hold on, Mr. Tinsley. Hold on. I took one piece of that trapezoid and I put it on the other side, but I still have a rectangle. This is why the the uh, formula for a trapezoid is area equal. Base high. One half of the base one plus base two times the height. Okay, so Mr. Tizzy, where are they getting this one half B1 plus B2? What they're doing is this is my base one, this is my base two. What do you know about math? When you add something together and divide by how many there are, that's my average. So what I'm doing is here. So remember, I should have, let me, when you, this first one here, let me draw a different, let me do black. So, so you can see it. See this right there? Mm -hmm. That was my first base. See that right there? That's mm -hmm. my second base. Mm -hmm. So what, they, what they're actually doing is taking the average of these two and then making a rectangle with mm -hmm. the average of these two bases with the same height. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is the average of the two bases. You add the two bases, you divide by two. This is why I put my formula this way. And if you look at the formula sheet, it has one half height times base one place base two. No, I need you to understand why you're taking half. You're finding the average of the two bases, then multiplying it by your height. So that's all your area problems, right? Except for one more. And this is another guaranteed problem. Area of a circle is pi r squared. You must know it. It's a guaranteed problem. The distance from the center to any edge is your radius. The area or circumference of a circle on every test. Area or perimeter of a rectangle on every test. Mm -hmm. Every single, if anybody in here has taken an exam, I guarantee you see one of them. It's certain mm -hmm. problems that are on every exam. Pythagorean theorem on every exam. Slope of mm -hmm. two points every exam, volume of a rectangular prism and volume of some other shape, every single exam, area of a rectangle, a perimeter of a rectangle, or area circumference of a circle, every, every GED exam. There are certain problems. So what you should do now is understand. So let's look at some problems real quick. It's almost seven o'clock, but let's look at some problems because that's where people get their issues from. Oh my God, the word problems, right? Yes. Yeah. Look, so let me open up Schoology real quick. I don't think I closed it. Again, Schoology is all free. It's free. <laughs> all it takes is your hard work. So let's go. It's free. Doesn't cost shit anything. Let's go to uh, practice problems. And we're looking for area. Area and perimeter right there. Okay. Let's go to preview. I gave you the formulas, but let's let's look at them. Start new ten. So a triangle has a base of 20. If the height equals H and its area is 80 centimeters squared, find a value of its height in area. Wow. 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 Most people want to read that question and they don't know what to do. This is what I need you to do for every single question. If you have a problem, I want you to hear my voice in your head. I showed you everything on this exam. I know how to do this problem. So say something positive. Take a deep breath. Mr. Tinsley said, uh, identify what they gave you. Okay. This is a triangle. So I know well, if I go to my formula sheet, I'm going to go get my formula for the area of a triangle. One half base times height. They gave me the base. My base is equal to 20. They gave me the area. My area equal 80. So now I'm going to plug in everything that I know. So area is 80. Equal one half. The base is 20. 
times H, right? So mm -hmm. what's half of 20? Oh, 10. I mean, 10. 10. So look what I did. I just did that in my head. Everybody knows the half of a number. Mm -hmm. Half of 20 is 10. 10 times mm -hmm. H. How can I get H by itself? What do I need to do? Subtract it on both sides. Oh, definitely not subtract. Stop playing. Divide. Oh, man. Equal I'm sorry. 10 times H. Divide. So, divide by what? By uh, two. Divide by 10. Whatever oh, I do on sorry. one side, I do on the other. We get H is equal to what's 80 divided by 10. A. 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 Okay. Mr. Tinsley, oh my God, this algebra is giving me a headache. You so can plug it in, yes. By the you answer. can plug it in. Yes. Area equal one half base times height. So one half times 20 times H. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my calculator and I'm going to use each of the multiple choice until I get the area of 80. Watch how easy this is. You don't have to know algebra. ND, one half times 20. My first multiple choice is two. My first multiple choice is two. So I'm going to hit enter. Did I get 80? No. No. So I'm going to go back up in here. I'm going to hit enter. My second multiple choice is four. Did I get 80? No. no. No, I'm going to go back up into my expression. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to change my four to the second, third multiple choice. Did I get 80? No. Again, I'm going to go to my, now we already know it's the last one, but let's plug it in and make sure. Did I get 80? Yep. No yes. algebra. If, if you understand what wow. the, how to get that formula from the formula sheet, plug in what you know. Mm -hmm. Now this problem, instead of doing the algebraically, you know how to use this calculator. You plugging everything in, you're done. Fifteen to thirty seconds. Thank you. What I would say to you, to anybody, is take the two weeks to master this calculator, because then once you start coming to the sessions and taking your practice test, these problems are done quickly. You don't even have to even guess. You would know that. I don't even need my formula sheet. I'm going to plug everything in. Because one thing you know about multiple choices, one of them are the answer. Plug it in until you get what you're looking for. Let me, let me maximize the ca uh, calculator so you can see the steps that were taken. So you can see it. I think I have uh, one person tomorrow, Tuesday, another person Wednesday. And I think Friday. So remember what I told you. We, we're coming towards the end of the year. A lot of people want to graduate before the end of the year. So that's their New Year's resolution, whatever. Mm -hmm. So again, my one-on-one -on -one sessions, if you notice, if you try to get sessions on Saturdays and Sundays, I've been booked. So try to get your session in. If you, if you have taken a practice test, you've taken a practice test on Schoology, I would say at least take well, this is what I'll suggest to you. Take the practice test. So let me show you what the practice tests are so you know. Um, yeah, leave. Again, so these are your math lessons. This is where you practice. This is where you take your pretest. This is where you learn how to do a lot of these concepts. I got an online textbook in math lessons, but I have additional practice problems right here. So two, the thing, two things I have, pre-algebra. Do you know the concepts before algebra? You should get an 80 on that pretest. If you can't, then you need to, don't even take a practice test, work on those concepts first. But here I have a whole plethora of GD practice exams. If you notice, I have 10 now. I have 10 full practice tests. Now, if you notice, some have with feedback, some say similar to actual tests. The ones that says feedback, once you take the exam, it immediately give you the right or wrong answer and how to do it correctly. Some of them have videos that I put in there, short videos that you can watch to see what you did wrong. The ones that say similar to actual tests are just like the exam. You can flag for review. You can use your calculator um, um, in your time for two hours. So what I would recommend is, first of all, taking a test with feedback. Why? 
doesn't matter what you get, 40, 50, 60, whatever. That's going to give you a good indication of what you need to practice. You can go through the feedback, see why you got it wrong, then take it again. Once you score over 70 on that one, go to the next one. Similar to actual test. That's just like the actual test. Take that and re rinse and repeat and do the same thing. I would expect you to do two to three practice tests. If you are consistently over 60, schedule a one-on-one -on -one with me. We do that one-on-one, -on -one, go schedule your exam. It's that simple. The, the reason why people are on schedule, I got two emails this weekend over the holiday. A, a person had a 64 on the practice exam and a 74 on the practice exam. She's scared to take the practice exam. I, what I need you to understand is anybody know, and I want you, I'm gonna I'm gonna see if anybody knows what's what percentage do you need to pass the GD? 68? 145. And 145. 145. Oh, 55 to 58% is a 145. So if there are 45 questions on the exam, okay? Well, we know half, right? Half is 23. So half, 50% is half. So we'll say 23. Okay, you need 5%. You need 5% more to pass. So that means out of 45 questions, you need 26. Right? So if I say easy, medium, hard, and there's 15, 15, and 15. That's where we get the 45 from. They evenly distribute the easy, medium, and hard. If I only need 26 to pass, if I get all the easy and medium problems right, do I pass the test? Yeah. This, yes. this is what I'm telling you. This is why do not spend a large amount of time on the difficult problems. Focus on the easy and medium problems to make sure you get those right. Once you finish the exam, then come back to these difficult problems. You will pass, I'm telling you. Listen, when, when, I, when I tell you, or oh, in a seven year period, of all the people that have taken the test that I've helped, there's only one person that has not passed, and she's taking her exam in January. That's it. Hundreds and hundreds of people. I'm giving you the advice. Go through that ebook. Learn the shortcuts to do the uh, 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 quadratic equation, system of equations, evaluate an algebraic expression, evaluate a function. Put, okay, your area and volume problems, how to plug them into the calculator. Understand that when you're taking a practice test on Schoology, it's, it's time for two hours. What you should be doing now is each problem, you should be able to finish each problem in three minutes. If you can't finish that problem in three minutes, when you see a problem like that on your test, you skip it, flag it for review. That's the second thing I want to tell you. The third thing I want to tell you, don't stress the difficult problems. If you know it's too hard, skip, put A or D, go to the next problem. And then you call me when you've done your test, let me know you pass. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, how do I get access to school? You got to send me an email. So I'm going to put my email in the chat real quick. So anybody who is new, uh, pass... GED math 79 at gmail.com. And the reason why, let me just tell you, uh, let me pause it. I just, I won't put this on the recording, but record. this diploma is stopping you from getting to accomplishing your goals. So this is, this is why, I said, I I, hold on, that. hold on for one second. This is why I give my phone number out. It, that's why I asked you to call me before your exam, after your exam. If you feel like quitting, I'll be, I'll be your encouragement. If you know somebody in this class, work with them, work together. We are all on this same 
and have the same objective is to help each other out. So when you come to class on Mondays and you have questions or something that you don't understand, guess what? You're not only helping yourself, you're helping someone else. All right, so listen, it's seven o'clock. 